Hey, it's Dennis with Cybercraft. Today we're gonna to be going through a practice exam. I found one from CompTIA. So we're gonna go ahead and do this as Security Plus practice test. I'm gonna do my note card here and just write out the answers. So we're gonna see how I do. And I'm gonna take this blind. I think it's a brand new one. So let's go ahead and try it out. All right, so a business development team reports that files are missing from the database system and server login screens are showing a lock symbol that requires you to contact the email address to access system and data. Which of the following attacks is the company facing? Okay, so I like to read the question twice, then read the answers and read the question again. So, and when I read it twice, the second time what I'm doing is I'm summarizing what I've read because there's a lot of fluff in these CompTIA questions. So let's see. BD team reports that files are missing from the database system and login screen showing a lock symbol. Okay, so it doesn't matter who's reporting this, but files are missing uh, and there's a lock symbol, requires user to contact the email address to access systems and data. Okay, so that's probably a ransomware attack. Uh, attackers are trying to gain some cryptocurrency, so then look at the answers. Rootkit, ransomware, spyware, bloatware, ransomware. So number one has to be B. Okay, all right, let's go number two. During a security incident, the security operations team identified sustained network traffic from malicious IP address 10149A. Oh no, A, security analyst is creating an inbound firewall rule to block the IP address from accessing the organization's network, which following fulfills this request. Okay, so we have to create a firewall rule to block the IP and we've had sustained traffic from this IP. So we wanna block this IP. Okay, so now we have to look at what blocks this IP. To block the IP address from accessing the organization's network, okay. Access list inbound, deny IP source. Well, the source has to match this. So we just wanna look at where source matches this. And we don't want permit, so it has to be deny. List deny IP source, boom, okay. Destination and destination within you put zero 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 and uh, zero you're basically saying any IP address. So this makes sense. It has to be a deny rule so we can easily X out these two, and then it has to be, you know, it has to have that IP address here. So this is this right now it's because the source would be the malicious IP. So that's B. All right, great. All right, question three, which of following threat actors is most likely to use common knowledge hacking tools found on the internet to attempt to remotely compromise organization's web server? Okay, so we have hacking, um, like we have script kitties, we have organized crime, hacktivists, and nation state actors. But it's gonna be a script kitty, so let me see if that's organized crime, insider threat, unskilled attacker, nation state. Okay, unskilled attacker is also uh, a script kitty. Sometimes you'll see script kitty, sometimes you'll see unskilled attacker. Unskilled attacker is a little more common, but sometimes you'll see script kitty. So unskilled attacker, absolutely. Number four, a systems administrator would like to set up a system that will make it difficult or impossible to deny that someone has performed an action. Okay, so this is describing non-repudiation. Non-repudiation is basically ensuring that all actions are tracked, but it's the word itself is a double negative non-repudiation you're not able to repute that you did something okay so that's what that this is trying to say so right here because this is worded so so awkwardly i know immediately it's non-repudiation uh which of following is the mystery of trying to accomplish non-repudiation adaptive identity security zone deceptive and destructive it's absolutely non-repudiation and sometimes you'll be able to tell right away based on the wording of the question <clears throat> So this is one of those examples that's absolutely non-repudiation. It is a very strange term. They should really should just call it tracking user behavior, something simple. But of course, cybersecurity terms can be overly complicated. All right, which of the following types of controls decreases the likelihood of a cybersecurity breach occurring? Types of controls decreases the likelihood of a breach occurring. So it could be talking about risk management strategies like mitigate, if we want to mitigate something, but I'm not sure what the possible answers are. So let's take a look. Corrective, transfer, detective, preventative. Okay. All right, so corrective works to uh, address a problem after it's happened, so that won't decrease the likelihood of something happening. Transferring, again, that's and that's not even really a type of control, but that's, you know, if we transfer risk, we're 
buying insurance essentially. Detecting a control doesn't decrease the likelihood of a breach. We're just detecting that it would happen. So preventative control has to be the correct answer. All right, D. A company is expanding its threat surface program and allowing individuals to security test the company's internet facing application. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. The company will compensate researchers based on the vulnerabilities discovered. This is a bug bounty. Which of the following best describes the program the company has set up? This is a long-winded way of saying bug bounty. It's expanding its threat surface program and allowing individuals. Okay, so this is just, we don't need that. Company is allowing individuals to security test the company's internet facing application. Okay, so it's a web application. Individuals can test the web application. The company will compensate them. Great, so if the company's compensating them based on testing, that's a bug bounty. Open source intelligence, bug bounty, red team, penetration testing. Now you do wanna think about the other answers because sometimes there's more than one right answer, but in this, this scenario, bug bounty is the best answer for sure. I mean, the other ones don't quite make sense here. So definitely a bug bounty. And that's a really good way, you know, we here at Cybercraft, I, I, I issue bug bounties. So if you find errors in our website, I've issued bug bounties multiple times. It's really good security system. Because if you don't issue bug bounties and you have people find vulnerabilities and they come to you and you just fix them and you don't tell them about it, next time when they find the vulnerability, they're not gonna tell you about it. And they might do something malicious with that. So it's not really ransom, you're paying people to promote general cybersecurity. You're basically giving them a reward for helping your company out. So you know, this is a common practice. I think it's a very healthy one. All right, which of the following is the final step of the instant response process? Okay, instant response process. They change this one every test iteration. Um, so first we have to detect, then we have to address you know, what we've detected. We have to assess it. So we have to detect it, we have to assess it, then we have to address it and then we have actions or lessons learned. So we detect something's going on, then we assess what's going, we assess, we figure out exactly the type of the attack. So first we detect there's an attack, then we assess what type of attack it is, then we correct it, and then we do lessons learned, we uh, work on the future. So containment, lessons learned, eradication, detection. Okay, so detection is first, lessons learned is last. Oh, so it's the final step is lessons learned. So I didn't need to go through all of that in my brain, but I did. Great. Yeah, so containment, you would contain before you would eradicate. So if you want to know the, the order here, it's detect, contain, eradicate, lessons learned. That would be the order here, but it's not asking us for the order. It's asking us for the final step, which is always lessons learned. And as, that comes a lot from the military. In the military, you always do a lessons learned section Sustain, sustains and improves, oftentimes it's called, where you just get everybody in a circle, you start talking, you ask questions, okay, what worked well, what didn't work well, and everybody can contribute. So that's usually how it should go, and you want to get feedback from every level of the organization, and then you wanna document it. Absolutely, you wanna document it. Okay, question eight, which of the following provides the details about the terms of a test with the third-party penetration tester? Okay, this is a contract document. Which of the following provides the details? So it should be terms of service or, now there's some, there's another term for the pen testing ones. I wanna think about it before I look at the answers. Uh, terms of engagement, I think it's, I think it's terms of engagement for CompTIA. Let's take a look. Rules of engagement, yeah, rules of engagement. Rules of engagement, supply chain analysis, right to audit clause, due diligence. It's rules of engagement, rules of engagement. Okay, rules of engagement, absolutely, it's A. These are pretty good questions. These are definitely different. An organization is leveraging a VPN, a virtual private network, between its headquarters and a branch location. Which of the following is the VPN protected? Okay, so this is a site-to-site -site VPN, uh, not a remote access VPN. But what is this protecting? That's the question. Which of the following is the VPN protecting? I mean, it's protecting data. I, don't, I can't guess at what the answers would be. Data in use, data in transit, geographic restrictions, or data sovereignty. Okay, so a VPN would protect data as it's transferred throughout the internet. It wouldn't protect data at rest, so it'd be data in transit. So that's absolutely bravo, or B. Okay, good. All right, question 10, last question? Yes, last question. Okay, 
which the following would be the most helpful in restoring data in the event of a ransomware infection? Which the following would be the most helpful in restoring data in the event of a ransomware infection? I mean, backup would be very helpful. So I'd say backup. Load balancing, geographic dispersion, encryption, and backups. Backups. Now, the problem with backups with ransomware is oftentimes it's a good idea. You know, a backup is a direct counter to a ransomware attack. The problem happens when you have sensitive data and the attacker does a double extortion attack. So they do the ransomware, they hold your, they encrypt or they basically they uh, make your data unusable because it, it only takes a few seconds to corrupt a large quantity of data. You just basically change a little portion of the of every file. It really doesn't take very long at all. But you know, restoring from a backup would protect that. Oftentimes what the ransomware gangs will do is they'll, they'll say, we're gonna threaten to release this information and cause a public incident for you. And that's where they get a lot of companies because the companies could have poor cybersecurity practices or they can have sensitive information or inf information they don't want the public to know. And that's why a lot of times they end up paying the bounties or paying the, the ransoms. So, but it's definitely backups. Okay, so here's my note card. I think we're good. I think we got 100%. I would be surprised if we didn't. Let's take a look at the answers. Answer key, B, ransomware, got it. 2B, access list, got that. C, unskilled attacker, very good. A, non-repudiation, excellent. D, preventative, very good. B, bug bounty, B is for bug bounty. Know your cybersecurity ABCs. Uh, seven, B, lessons learned. A, rules of engagement. B, data in transit. And D, backups. Yeah, great, so 100%. Great, let me give myself a little star. So great job, well done. Uh, I hope this is helpful. This, this is my thought process when I go into any exam. I always do that, read the question twice, think about what I would answer and then read the answers and then read the question again. If you do that, you're less likely to pick red herrings. You don't wanna read the answers right away. You want to think about what you would answer first and that's really gonna help you whenever you do your test. So I hope this is a, a helpful practice exam for you. A little practice quiz. Again, you can find this on CompTIA's website, so I definitely recommend that. And if you're looking for CompTIA certification training, go to cybercrafttraining.com. We have lots of courses, we have practice tests, we've got uh, video courses. You know, if you like my instruction, you get my full video course. We've got all the CompTIA materials, you get a big discount. And you also get an exam vouchers discounted as well. So anything you need, help you pass your test. Go to cybercrafttraining.com. We'll be able to help you out. I hope this was a helpful video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.